Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to go through ES6. It's JavaScript, except the latest version, and it allows us to do some cooler stuff with JavaScript. So let's uh, get into it. ES6 is a standardized version of JavaScript with the goal of unifying the language specifications and features. Most of the challenges use ES5. The most recent standardized version is called ES6, and it was released in 2015. And we're going to go through arrow functions, classes, modules, promises, generators, and let and const. So yeah, let's go to the first lesson. Explore differences between the var and let keywords. So var, you can have a variable called camper and name them James, and have another variable called camper and name it David, and it'll work. But if you use let instead, then this actually won't work, which is a lot better. For the challenge, we want to switch all the vars to lets. It's kind of cool inside Free Code Camp, you can uh, highlight and then do Command D to go down on that same keyword. But yeah, let's see here. Yep. Compare scopes of the var and let keywords. When you declare a variable with the var keyword, it's declared globally or locally if declared inside a function. But let will always be local unless used outside. So in most in pretty much all cases, you should use let instead of var. Let is just a way better version of var, so just uh, stop using var keyword and start using let. So yeah, for the challenge, we'll put let i, and then we'll also do let i here equal block scope. So now these are different i's. i in here will just be this one, and the i out here will be this one out here. So yeah, let's try it. Yep. Clear a read-only variable with the const keyword, so const uh, stands for constant. So this is when you want a variable to stay constant and not change. So here we don't change sentence at all. We just print it out. For this one we can use const. And then for this variable i, let's use let as again. And let's try this. Also there's a convention where we uppercase all of our constants. So in, in this uh, example we want to use sentence uppercase for both of them and then try it. Yep. Mutate an array with const. Um, so we can still mutate arrays, we just can't set like s to a new array. We, have, we can still mutate it though, so we can do like s of um, index 1 equals 5. s of index 0, we want to equal 2. s of index 2, we want to equal 7. And yeah, let's try that. Yep. Prevent object mutation. Here we can do object.freeze function to make sure that anything inside that object will not change, be updated or deleted. So for the challenge, we want to do math constants and we want to wrap it with object.freeze. Make sure there's a semicolon and run it. Make sure you spell constants right and then run it. Yep. Use arrow functions to write concise anonymous functions. Your arrow functions look like this and they're very, very useful and they look a lot cleaner. I love to use them. so. Yeah, pretty awesome. So here we want to do let magic equal a function, arrow function. So now magic is a function that we can call like so. Even though it's declared with let, it's still a function that you can call. And yeah, this should work here. Let's try it. I guess magic should actually be a constant variable, so we'll go const magic. Yeah. Write arrow functions with parameters. So kind of the same thing. We'll go const my concat equals the those parameters and then equals arrow. And then this is our function. And let's try it. Yep. Set default parameters for your functions. Here, here we can have like our parameter and then have an equal sign, and then that will be its default. So for the challenge, we want to to default value to one. So if value is not specified, it'll still add one to it. So yeah, there it added 51, even though we didn't specify an increment value. But if we do specify an increment value, then it will actually use that value instead. So yeah, let's try this. Yep. Use the rest parameter with function parameters. Um, for the challenge, we want to change these parameters to use dot 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 args. And then we also want to change this to args. So now args will be passed into this array. And then we're going to reduce them. And I think this should work. So let's try it. Uh, <laughs> args has to be a different name. So we'll do arguments. And now let's try it. Actually, I think we can just call arguments.reduce right away. Get rid of that line. Now let's try it. No. Okay, I guess it needs to be named args because it was giving me an error otherwise. So now let's try it. There we go. Okay. Using the spread operator to evaluate arrays in place. Here we can use the spread operator, which is three dots. And it basically just copies the whole array. So now array two equals array one, just because we use the spread operator and then r one in, into it. Um, I wonder what happens if we just 
skip the dots. If we skip the dots, then it becomes a nested array. So we want to keep the dots there so that it actually copies the whole array without extra brackets. Let's try that. Yep. Use destructuring assignment to extract values from objects. Here we want to put brackets around today and tomorrow. And that way we can get rid of dot today and dot tomorrow. So what it's doing is it's basically pulling today out of high temperatures and setting it to a variable called today. And same for tomorrow, pulling tomorrow out of high temperatures and setting it to a constant variable called tomorrow. So if we console log today, yeah, it gives us 77, which is correct. So let's try this. Yep. Use destructuring assignment to assign variables from objects. Here we want to destructure again. So we'll put brackets around these. And then you'll notice that high today isn't the same as today. And high tomorrow isn't the same as tomorrow. So what we do is we put colon and then we do today. And then we do colon and then do tomorrow. And now we have a variable called high today that's going to be today from this object. So let's try that. These actually have to be flipped around. So today goes before high today. So we pull out today and call it high today. Pull out tomorrow and call it high tomorrow. Let's try that. There we go. Use destructuring assignment to assign variables from nested objects. So again, we'll put brackets around these to start. And then we'll pull out today. And out of today, we'll pull out low. And we'll call that low today. And we'll call it low today by doing this. You put low and then colon low today. And we'll do the same thing for high today. So we'll go today, high, high today. Make sure there's a bracket at the end and try this out. You gotta get rid of this at the end too. Now try it, there we go. Use destructuring assignment to assign variables from arrays. We can destructure with arrays too. So here we'll do const ab equals the array of ba. And now a will equal six and b will equal eight by doing this. Let's try it. Maybe this has to be a let, no. Maybe we have to do a, b equals b, a without a let keyword. Now let's try it. Yeah, okay, there we go. Use destructuring assignment with the rest parameter to reassign array elements. Uh, for the challenge, we're gonna do something like this, where it shows like this. So we'll go const a, b, and then the rest of the list equals list, and then we'll return list right here. And let's try that. No, a, b might have to be list zero and list one. Okay, I think I just had to do r instead of list. So let's try it now. Yep, okay. Use destructuring assignment to pass an object as a function's parameters. So here stats is this object and we're passing it in as a parameter. What we can do is we can actually destructure it to use the max and the min um, parts of the stats, stats uh, object. Okay, maybe we just need max and min in here and then try that. Wow, okay. I thought that we needed to specify like what object it was, but I guess not. Like it already knows to use stats, the stats object, but uh, yeah, I guess that works, so. All right, create strings using template literals. Um, here we can do backticks, and then inside we can do, um, we want to make something like this here. So I'll just copy this into my template. And then instead of no vars here, we're gonna do dollar sign bracket, and then we'll do failure, or we'll do result. Actually, we'll, we're gonna do array zero since it's passed into this function. And then we'll copy this down a couple times. And then we'll go R1 and R2. And I think that's what they wanted here. So let's try it out. An iterator should be used. So I guess we want to use a for loop. All right, here I set up a for loop to loop through the array. And then I, I'm pushing each item on with the correct like label using RI. And let's try that now. There we go. Write concise object literal declarations using object property shorthand. Here, name, name is the same as, as just doing name. And same with the other ones. So we can just do name, age, and gender here. And it'll be the same thing as like name, colon, name, age, colon, age, and so on. So let's try it. Yep. Write concise declarative functions with ES6. So here's the way it was done before, and now it's done like this. So we can get rid of the function keyword altogether and the colon. So I'll just do that here, get rid of the function and the colon, and it should be good to go now. Yep. Use class syntax to define a constructor function. So now we're getting into classes, I guess. So we'll go class vegetable. So it's gonna be a class called vegetable, and it's gonna have a constructor, and the constructor runs anytime we call new and then the actual class and then we pass carrot in so that's going to be called the name and then what we want to do with the vegetable is we want to set this dot name equal to the name that's passed in so now this vegetable has a property 
of dot name. So as you can see here, if I update this to car or ka, then carrot dot name is ka. If we do carrot, then carrot dot name is carrot, and that's because it sets this dot name equal to that name here, and then we can call dot name on it. If that if it was let's say instead of this dot name, we'll do this dot hello. Then we can do dot hello here, and then it'll get carrot for us that way as well. But in this case, we want it to be name. So yeah, let's try it. Yep. Use getters and setters con to control access to an object. Here we want to make a class with getters and setters. So I'll do that quick and I'll show you after. All right, so I think I got this done. Um, it creates a new thermostat object and we put in a Fahrenheit temperature and it sets this dot underscore temperature to be that temperature. And we just call it underscore temperature because that's what it's called like inside the class and nothing else can access it except for the actual class. So then when we call dot temperature, it's actually doing this function here. So it should return 24.44 in Celsius when we call this. And that set temperature is just so that we can set a new temperature by doing thermostat temperature equals 26. I'm not sure if this will work or not, but I'll try it. Yep, I guess it does work, so. Cool. Create a module script. Um, here we just want to copy and paste this and we want to change the source to index.js and I guess that's fine. That'll work for the challenge but I'm not entirely sure what type module does. I'm sure you can read this to find out so I'll just go. Use export to share a code block. This is very useful if you're using multiple files to write your JavaScript so that we can import it in one JavaScript file and then use it in that file. So here we just want to export both of these. We could also export them by doing this syntax over here, but I actually prefer to just put export in front of each of them. So let's try that. Yep. Reuse JavaScript code using imports. So like I said, if we're working in a different file now, we can import it by doing import and then we import our uppercase string and our lowercase string and we import them from dot slash string functions. The dot slash here means the current folder and then we grab the file string functions and then in that file there's these two functions here and now we can use them here so let's try it I think we need a .js extension at the end of there okay now let's try it there we go use star to import everything from a file something very useful again so here we want to import all as string functions from that same directory or same file so dot slash string functions .js so now when we do string functions dot it'll show us like uppercase or lowercase as well. So it's very useful if you have a ton of functions in one file and let's try it. Yep. Create an export fallback with export default. You can only have one export default in your file and I like to put it at the end of the file and I'm guessing we'll import it in the next section. So I think I'll just do this for now. I might have to put this in brackets. Let's try that. Okay, I guess they aren't letting me do that. So I'll just put export default up here and try that. Okay, there we go. Import the default export. Here we'll import subtract from the math functions file. And we can actually name this anything we want. Um, and it'll still import the, the right function from that file. But in this case, we wanna call it subtract. So let's try that. Make sure we have a dot slash here and try that. There we go. Create a JavaScript promise. Not gonna go too deep into promises. You should look up different videos for that. But yeah, basically we just wanna make a promise with a resolve and reject and call it make server request. And with promises, you can do like dot then and then get a bunch of code from the server. And that's kind of what promises are used for, but I'm not gonna go too deep into that now. So let's just do this. Complete a promise with resolve and reject. So here we're pretending that response from server is an actual response from server. Um, so what we wanna do is call resolve. If there is a response from server, we wanna call resolve with the string, we got the data. And then if there's no response from the server, then we want to reject and put in a string of data not received. That should work. Yep. Handle a fulfilled promise with then. So like I was saying before, we can do a dot then on it. So we'll go make server request dot then. And then this will take a result and it will console log the result. And here the result is, I'm guessing the result would be one of these strings, but I'm not entirely sure. It's kind of weird that it's not console logging it, but whatever, we'll just run it. Yep. Handle a rejected promise with catch. So we can do dot then, and then after dot then, then we can do dot catch, and we can catch an error and console log the error. So yeah, I'm guessing resolve will be the result part. 
And then if it does reject, then it'll just go to the catch and it'll console log this. So let's try this. Yep, so there we go. We successfully completed ES6 challenges. So we completed all of these. Next up, we're gonna go into regular expressions and that should be pretty fun as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.